Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Stream Key Podcast. This is episode 24, I believe. Uh, this is our weekly show here at True Gaming where we talk with streamers about ways to improve as a streamer on Twitch specifically and other platforms. And this week, I'm really excited to have Nero TNC on the show. He is the first partner streamer that we've ever had on here. You can see he's got his hello. fancy little uh, background on there. It's a signature thing. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. So about a little bit about Nero quickly before we get started here. Again, like I said, he's a Twitch partner on Twitch. <laughs> he's also a Discord partner. He's got about 13,000 followers on Twitch. And it, I looked a little bit into this. It looks like you've been on Twitch since 2012, but you started streaming in 2013. Is that that's about correct. right? Awesome. Yeah, that's correct. Cool. So uh, it should be a really good topic today. The guys were talking about partnership, um, Nero's experience as a partner, what that was like, how he got there and also uh, how he feels about the program, um, misconceptions about it, that type of thing, and some of how to get to be a partner as well. So hopefully you guys will get a lot of value out of this one. I'm really excited. Nero, my man, can you quickly kind of just introduce yourself to people who might not know you as well? Sure can. Uh, my name's Nero Classic. That's my real name. Uh, I have been a partner on Twitch for four years, streaming for five years. Uh, before that, I was a professional wrestler for 12 years. Uh, my, my family has all been in wrestling, so there's a big wrestling theme around my stream uh, and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I'm i just just a normal nerdy guy, family <laughs> man uh, that, that loves his games and loves community. So that's awesome. me. Awesome. And you do a lot of uh, Nintendo stuff specifically, right? Oh, yeah. I've got a... I got a got a big love for nintendo that people will call me a fanboy and i'm okay with that uh i'm i'm a very big fanboy for nintendo every every release is is a purchase for me usually so yeah i mean i don't blame you at all i love nintendo too he actually i couldn't find a great image of it but you have like a gamecube logo for your stream um with the yeah, little tnc um, on there <laughs> gamecube is my favorite console of all time fight nice. me on that uh it is the greatest <laughs> console um I, I don't know why. I, I fell in and out of love when I was uh, younger with the GameCube because of its lack of support from third-party titles and stuff. But um, as I grew older, my love for the system just got bigger and bigger. And uh, yeah, I, it's it's just a cute little design that one of my viewers actually made for me. And uh, nice. it, it, it became my logo. That's so cool. I love when viewers do that. Uh, so for anyone who hasn't seen the show before, the way this works is we will talk for about... 30 to 40 or 30 to 40 minutes on this topic which again is partnership and that'll be just me and Nero but if you have a question for Nero or myself about partnership about streaming about whatever save that till about 9 40 if you're eastern time or 2 40 if you're Nero's time uh, and we will get to your questions during that point of the show we're happy to take whatever questions you have so until then we'll kind of jump into the main discussion here so Nero uh, quickly can you tell us about your your username, Nero TNC, where that kind of came from, what it means, all that? Um, yeah, sure. Like I, I saw the question, so I know that the, the rest <laughs> was going to be, did I have a previous handle? And I right. did. I, I was on Justin TV back when, uh, back way when, two thousand nine ish sort of time, wow. and uh, I I had the username Nero one thousand, which was like my gamer tag. I, I don't know why it was just one thousand was the number that I picked to go after my name. Um, when I signed up to Twitch, because you, at that point you couldn't transfer your Justin TV account over to Twitch, mm -hmm. um, I needed a new username, and so I picked TNC. TNC was kind of a little wrestling faction among my friends, <laughs> uh, so it was a silly, silly little uh, thing. But it became my brand as such. Um, TNC is the name of my community. It's the name of everything, pretty much on my on my stream. So. Mm -hmm. uh, it it doesn't mean a lot. It stands for the new click, but that doesn't really, that doesn't really like represent what <laughs> the stream is about or what anything about my stream. It's just it's just three letters really that kind of brands my stream. Right, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I was I was looking into that a little bit and I was curious uh, where that all came from because you put that on everything, right? Like you have your little pretty much, uh, pretty much Twitter. My Twitter is still narrow one thousand from yeah back when I had it, but. Uh, Everything else is pretty much narrow TNC. Yeah, well, I mean that TNC has become pretty iconic. I think uh, you see it for, on for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure on your for hat. For sure, that's really iconic. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's really cool. Uh, I always like to get the backstory of usernames just because there's so many crazy ones out there. 
yeah. okay so last kind of just intro question here can you tell us about one of your favorite moments on Twitch? Uh, maybe one of your most memorable streaming moments, and that might have been this past week, based on what happened. Uh, yeah, this past week was pretty big, uh, being on the front page of Twitch. Mm. But I was thinking about this, and uh, it's it's got to be when I got partnered because the emotions that I had at that time, the yeah, the the initial like when I when I got partnered um, before a staff member came into my stream and, and said, right, we're accepting you for partnership. Oh, wow. I, I, I had um one of my viewers, my moderators, message me like, dude, there's a there's a staff member in your chat. <laughs> and people had known that I'd have been applying for partnership for about a year beforehand. Like, I'd just been applying and applying and applying. This is the old system that we'll get into a little bit later. Um, and so I stiffened up. I was all like, oh, God, there's a there's a staff member in my channel i've got to i got to show off all the good bits about my stream so i had my little johnny on bosch video my intro video that i have i showed that off because if anybody doesn't know and i like to name drop i am friends with johnny on bosch who used to be a power ranger and is a voice actor and so you know he <laughs> he uh he helped me out with a little intro video so i was like oh i gotta show that off so all this happened all the emotions he came in he said you partnered i screened the house down i went and told my mom who i was living with at the time uh she came in to my stream <laughs> and she was she said to me you, you're a partner and i was like yeah i'm a partner with twitch and she she just goes i, I want a partner i haven't <laughs> had sex for 12 years and i was like mom how can you say that you're you're live on stream in front of a staff member i've just been partnered and you bring up that i was I lost it, and but it's become kind of synonymous and one of the biggest <laughs> moments of my Twitch streaming is my mom being on on, on stream <laughs> saying that. But yeah, that was that was hilarious and embarrassing all at the same time. Oh my Probably gosh. the best moment. That's amazing. That's a great story. <laughs> I want partner. I, I like to be partner too. I can't get that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. Well, um, so let's get into that a little bit since that is sort of the first question I had for you on partnership. Um, tell us about the process leading up to partnership. How long were you streaming before you got there? Um, was there anything you did that you kind of felt helped to make you break that barrier a little bit? Uh, I think it all comes down to community uh, at the end of the day. Um, I started streaming uh, right after I got injured from wrestling. So I, I couldn't wrestle, I couldn't work. Um, I started streaming and... Uh, just just as a way to pass the days, pass the time, I was streaming Minecraft every day for about six hours every day uh, of, the, of the weekdays. And um, it was it was just filling my time. And then I got here that you can get partnered and you can make some money from this. Like, So I was like, well, you know, that's something to aim for while I'm off work. Because at this point, I didn't know the diagnosis of my injury and whatnot. Mm. Um, so, you know, I was just thinking I've got to try and earn some money while I'm off work this is a good way to try and invest some time into. I, I applied for partnership when I was getting about 400 viewers at a time. Mm. Uh, and this this was this was just on Minecraft every day. And mm. admittedly, the, the community was just kids at that yeah. time. Um, and uh, it met the requirements that Twitch was asking for at that time, because they didn't they didn't partner many streamers at mm. that point. They didn't uh, give many people subscription buttons, even if you were a partner. Hmm. Um, so I applied and I, I think this is just what I think that they saw that all I do is stream Minecraft. Minecraft was an easy viewer getter, if you will, at the time. Right. There wasn't right. much, there wasn't many dimensions to my stream at that point. Um, and I, I applied and I applied and I applied and I got denied uh, time and time again uh, until the point where I was kind of sick of the community that i'd made like i i didn't want the community to just be kids and that's no that's not ripping on anybody that was still that's still a part of my community that was then it was mm -hmm. just there was a lot of toxicity mm -hmm. and i had a vision when i started streaming that if i'm going to create a community i want to create an extended family and i i made the decision to switch from minecraft which was very hard because going from x amount of viewers to a small percentage of the amount of viewers that i had at the time mm -hmm. um was wasn't very appealing when you think <laughs> you've got to reach certain uh certain thresholds to to be partnered um right so 
I, I made that decision. I try, I turned my community around into something that I wanted. Um, I, I spent, I spent about four months streaming Minecraft over like every day. I spent the rest of the, the year that I was on Twitch. So another eight months building my community around, uh, the binding of Isaac and other games that I was just filling, uh, filling half the stream with, uh, a random variety, if you will. And, uh, I, I eventually built a community from that and a more mature community, a, uh, community that was more there for me rather than the game that i was playing mm -hmm. which was again the goal that i had for myself was that i wanted the community to be there for me i want to be the show as a wrestler i was always an entertainer <laughs> so i wanted to be the entertainer there um and that's when i was i was continually uh applying for partnership at the time as well because you know <laughs> if you don't ask you don't get i live right. by that kind of motto <laughs> and and so I, I applied and I applied, and then it eventually happened when some some staff member came into my stream. I wasn't meeting the threshold of viewers um, at the time. I was playing a little game called Puzzler World, which again <laughs> is synonymous in my uh, community. It was it was a you know end of the day. I just want to relax and chat to people kind of game, and uh, and yeah, the staff member came in. He thought it was a fantastic stream, <laughs> and he partnered us there, and that was four years ago now. Wow. And I like to think that the community has uh, continued to grow from strength to strength since then. Wow. So 2014, you got partnered, it sounds like? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So that was, I guess, a little bit over a year of streaming before you got partnered? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Um, that's It's cool you explained that whole journey between communities, too, because I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head. It's really important to build a community that you really like um, and don't end up just hating because you're... You know, it sounds like when you're streaming Minecraft, it was a lot of doing that more so, not that you enjoyed it, but you enjoyed the viewers more than the yeah, community. Yeah, I, I, I grew to resent my own community, mm. which is something that you don't want when you're doing this. Because at the end of the day, this is a hobby that you can turn into a job. Like, that's the way I see it. Right. And uh, if you're not enjoying that, that hobby or that job, then, or if you're not enjoying that hobby, then why would you make it a job? Yep, I totally Does that agree. Does sense? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people kind of get caught up in that sometimes and yeah. uh, see it more as a job than a hobby at some point. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'll be the first to admit that I had the, the wrong kind of mindset when I started streaming in the, oh, I can make money from this. Mm. That That's not the mindset to have when you when you start streaming. Mm. Uh, it's It's got to be about what you enjoy doing first and foremost. Absolutely. I mean, I had a huge, I had a huge love for video games anyway. And uh, if I wasn't streaming, I would be playing video games for the amount of time that I was anyway. So having, uh, you know, the, the community or, or the companionship of people there talking to me was just a bonus. Right. Yeah. I think, uh, you probably can't sustain yourself long term on Twitch if you're just looking for money as opposed to the passion. So definitely not. Definitely not. Awesome. So not unless you're a ninja. Yeah. <laughs> Basic. I mean, at that point, that's just a whole nother level. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about when you got partnered. Uh, you said you started streaming because you just kind of enjoyed it as a hobby and also as a potential way to help you still do something while you had that injury from wrestling. Um, yeah. Once you got partnered, did your view of streaming kind of shift or did you have different goals? Uh, what changed for you when that happened? Well, partnership always seemed like to be the end goal. That was the the one goal that I had when I when I started. And once you get partnered, you realize that that's just the beginning beginning of the journey. There is there is so much more to it. It's not it's not one battle that you have to you have to fight. It's it's you know it's keeping up everything after that because there's always a lot of hype around yourself when you get partnered or if you you know even nowadays if you get affiliate, um, you'll get a bunch of subscribers or bits or donations or whatever you uh whatever and it will die down mm. after that like because the hype dies down you become part of the furniture when it comes to twitch uh <laughs> twitch is very saturated now and so you know there's only so many people going around that can support you mm -hmm. and and so it it was hard to re like understand that to figure to to accept that after getting partnered that it, it wasn't always going to be as busy or as successful as it was at the beginning. Right. Yeah. I totally get and that. I, I think my, my goal as a whole, uh, when it came to getting partnered after that was to 
then have a schedule because mm. I, wa I wasn't streaming at a set schedule at the time. Obviously, I, I suffer with a lot of pain. My, my diagnosis now is chronic neuropathic pain. Mm, wow. uh, and so I suffer with a lot of pain every day. And it was really hard to keep a schedule at that time uh, because I had a lot of uncertainty going on in my life. Uh, now I'm, you know, I'm a father now. I, I live with my fiance and stuff. I have a routine in every day and it's so much easier. Uh, and I found it so much easier to keep the positivity and motivation for streaming going now that I have a schedule uh, and I can keep it every day. Right. So that was that was the main goal that I had after getting partnered. Wow. So you actually got partnered without even having a schedule. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, I think you're right. I think, you know, everyone kind of puts partnership on this, you know, long term goal, like you said. Uh, that's sort of like the peak of the mountain. Um, yeah. But then, you know, not many people are in this situation, but when you do get partnered, the question is, where do you go from there? Um, so, you know, after you establish that schedule for yourself on Twitch, it sounds like you've been pretty consistent with that since you got partnered. Um, are there any other goals that kind of keep you motivated already being a partner or something else to reach for or something that you just find passionate or you are really passionate about? Well, I'm really passionate about streaming full stop. Uh, mm. it, it was, it was a hobby, um, that was used to fill time. Like I said, and it, it became my life as such. Like I, I suffer with depression as well, as well as anxiety. And the anxiety is, is a horrible, horrible, uh, illness, if you will, where I, I couldn't stand the thought of leaving the house, but at the same time, I loved the fact that I had people to talk to online and mm. that helped me overcome my troubles that I had, uh, in regards to anxiety. Hmm. Um, what was the initial question? <laughs> just just <laughs> basic. No, you're about. fine. Um, basically you, know, you mentioned scheduling, but other reasons to keep streaming, um, after you've hit partnership, other goals to reach for, because right. again, once you hit uh, that, where do you go? Yeah, it is. I think the recent changes to Twitch has helped with uh, the emote tiers that you have. Mm. Um, I think that helps a lot because uh, I made a push over Christmas time and and we said, right, we want to get at least one new emote tier. And mm. we got one and that became two, that became three, that became four, that became five. Wow. I was over 200 subscribers at, at one point, which is a, a, a new high for me. Wow. And I was, I was loving it because, you know, I've, built my community it's grown that much uh there was the downfall of you know the gifted subs coming in they're great <laughs> they're fantastic but they're not they're not guaranteed subs mm -hmm. so it's not guaranteed income that you get in because those those months they run out pretty quick yeah and and so uh you know it's hard to estimate where you are income wise right. when you get gifted subs um but you know when you're when you're working when you're doing this as a job and you're you're trying to make this your job and you're trying to uh get income from this you you have to keep fighting every day you have to keep battling and and even if you're not feeling the the game that you're playing or or the the stream that day you know you've got to put the time in you've got to keep motivated because if you don't then those numbers are just going to keep dropping your community is just going to you know find somewhere like if you miss a day i I'm, it, it i lose my mind when I have to miss a day, because if you, you're not there at that certain time of the day, a viewer can find another stream that's going to be there at that time of the day yep. as well. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to come back for next day. Cause they could find this, this next, next streamer. Hmm. Like, like I said, streamers, stream is so saturated that it is a constant battle to keep people engaged in your community. I, I believe anyway, this is all, my own feelings anyway no yeah i totally agree with that i mean every day more and more people sign up to stream to twitch so it's only getting harder to stand out from the crowd for yep. sure um so let's talk a little about the partnership over the years then um has yep. the program kind of changed over the years you talked a little bit about this but um anything that is big that's come along that's helped you or um things that you like about how it used to be anything like that uh, I liked the way it used to be in in regards to that it was a case to case situation where instead of just ticking boxes of the number of viewers that you have an average time, uh, they would review each case, review each stream, 
Mm. And and that's what happened with me. I had this staff member come in. He was reviewing my stream. He enjoyed what he saw. He saw potential in me, and he partnered me, even though I wasn't meeting the certain criteria that hmm. uh, that I that they went for at, at that time. Like if 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 it was today, I don't hit the I don't hit the average viewers now that I would need to partner to be partnered. I'd be mm. affiliate because everybody and their dog can be affiliate now. Um, <laughs> I, that's not a disrespectful to anybody being affi mm. affiliate or anything, but it is a very easy way for Twitch to make money basically is to have uh, everybody be affiliate and they can take 50% of <laughs> everything that people make. But you know, that's another question for another day, I guess. Um, I I like the, the old way it used to be. I like the case to case, mm. uh, yeah, I like the case to case. Right, because it was more about um, the quality of the streamer rather than the size yeah. or the, basically just arbitrary numbers that. In in my opinion, uh, as a variety streamer, it's very hard to keep a consistent view account because you're always going to have a game come along that's more popular than the other. Mm. If you've got somebody that streams one game and one game only, you're likely to build a community faster or at least a viewer base faster i don't know about community i can only speak from my own experience and that's mm -hmm. you know being being variety people ended up coming for me rather than for the game right. and that's why you see lots of streamers that only stream one game when they switch to a different game they they lose a lot and then they they get depressed or they get uh disheartened and they end up stop streaming i've seen that happen to mm. lots of different people that i consider friends um they've just disappeared because it, it's mm. not they become res like i did with minecraft they become resentful to the community that they've got because they're not there for them after hmm. they've made the switch Interesting. that's how i see it yeah no i agree um and you had that experience where you know you you did single game streaming and you know you built a community or a viewer base at least faster but you didn't like that community as much Whereas yeah. when you took the time and, you know, maybe it sucked to start as variety streamer and build up that uh, following s more slowly, it sounds like over time that has actually been more beneficial to you and you're happier. Yeah, I'd say it's, it's benefited a lot is that, uh, again, people come there for me rather than for the games that I'm playing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a long, it's a long term plan, but I think you'll be more happy in the end if you do that. Um, if you're a person yeah. who likes to play lots Every, of games. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. So I can't, right. I can only speak from experience and from the, the people that I've seen. So like, don't take my word as gospel. This isn't, <laughs> this, this isn't, uh, the way it is, but I, I've just noticed in my, uh, five years on Twitch that, that when people make that change from one game that they've streamed every day, uh, to another, they become disheartened at the, the lack of following that they've had, follow them over again, unless you're ninja. <laughs> well, I mean, even Ninja just streams one game, really. So I don't know how applicable that is. But um, anyway, I love Ninja, by the way. I'm not talking. Oh, I do too. Ninja. I, I love Ninja's <laughs> All right, cool. Let's keep moving on here a little bit. Um, let's talk about your front page experience on Twitch, because so for anyone who doesn't know, uh, I guess it was two days ago on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, Wednesday. Nero was on the front page of Twitch, and like literally the first thing you see on Twitch when you come to the home page his stream starts auto playing, which is crazy. Um, how did you end up on the front page of Twitch? Um, and how much work was involved behind the scenes to get there? That kind of thing. Uh, well, I, I, uh, it's been a big week this last week for wrestling fans. Uh, it was WrestleMania, which is the biggest event for wrestling fans, uh, everywhere. And there's a lot goes on in wherever WrestleMania is held this year. It was held in Louisiana. And, uh, there's always other wrestling companies that piggyback on WWE and show wrestling shows and, and wrestling started to get a little bit more popular on Twitch. Uh, there's, there's events being shown on huh. Twitch. There's a wrestling category. Um, I personally stream a WWE 2K18, which is the video game show every Saturday, um, where it's pretty interactive. I have, uh, my subs, created as wrestlers and then i pit them against each other and we let the computer take over and, and we see who becomes uh, the champion and i commentate over the matches because i've got the background with wrestling I, I know the moves i know everything uh i don't know everything but <laughs> i know everything <laughs> everything when it comes to moves and whatnot I, I know what i'm talking about um so 
I've been doing that for the last six months, maybe. And I got an email uh, about two, three weeks ago. Uh, it went straight in my junk folder. Oh no! Uh, I, I looked the next day, and it was from a, a. I looked at it the next day, and I was like, "Oh no! I hope I haven't missed my opportunity." It basically said, uh, "Wrestling content creators, uh, we've got a special week coming up where we're highlighting wrestling on the front page. Um, do you do you want to be on the front page?" And I I bit <laughs> the email's hand off, and uh, you know I've been waiting for an opportunity like this for four years since I got partnered. Hmm. Um, and I I emailed them back, told them my schedule, uh, and they basically gave me a time and a date after after a long Easter weekend where I wasn't getting emails and I wasn't sure what was going on. Uh, I got the email back, giving me the date and the time, and uh, yeah, it just became excitement since then. Uh, That's so cool. Going forward to it. Yeah, it was really entertaining to watch on the front page. I gotta say, um, it was and- it was insane. It was the the busiest my stream has ever been. We hit a, a max of seventeen hundred viewers, I think, uh, which is pretty incredible. Uh, mm-hmm. We we managed after our two hour time slot on the front page finish, uh, we managed to withhold about seven hundred of those viewers mm-hmm. um, for another two hours, which is pretty impressive, I think, because if you go on the front page. You're generally just going on to Twitch to find your your followers or, or, or who you're following. Sorry, um, you don't. You generally stick around. So I must have done something right to bring in X amount of viewers that yeah. stuck around my channel. Um, and I I personally have just been waiting for an opportunity like that. Um, I I do think I, it may be tooting my own horn, but I do think I've got an uh, electric personality. I've got an <laughs> enigmatic personality where I can hook people in if I'm given the chance. Unfortunately, being a variety streamer, you tend to fluctuate with viewers because some people don't want to watch the game that you're playing at that time. You know, there's new games that come out that I don't always get, and people move over to them and and streaming is just a revolving door of viewers you're always going to get new people coming in and and people going out finding somewhere else um so it was it was a fantastic experience on the front page and i'm hoping i've kept some of those viewers that 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 came and will come again tomorrow for my saturday afternoon wrestling stream oh yeah that'd be so cool it's it's so cool to hear about though i mean it took you four years to get an opportunity like that you said so yeah it's all about the patience for I, you. I i instantly emailed after i was on such a high after the stream because it was it was just such a fantastic experience i instantly emailed the guy that i was in contact with at twitch and said what do i have to do to get another opportunity like that um and i'm, I'm still waiting for a response and i hope <laughs> i do get a response because uh it's something to aim for it's it's another goal that can come my way you know and, and having goals helps motivate you and Mm -hmm. staying motivated with streaming is can be hard at times and it's definitely something that i could use to uh to keep me going yeah absolutely um and i think it just proves you know you mentioned you have that kind of mentality of um you got to really ask for what you want and go go get it as opposed to just waiting for it to come to you yeah Um, i I feel like i've waited long enough kind of thing i've i've uh before it, true gaming has actually helped me a lot in the past few weeks like I, I think i'll get to this at a later question but um i think i've kind of learned the mentality of i've got to go and ask for it and go and get it rather than wait for it now um and that's partly in thanks to true gaming that i'll get to mm. in a bit yeah absolutely uh cool we'll keep moving on here a little bit we're <laughs> This is such a great discussion so far. Um, I have so many questions that we probably won't get to all of them. <laughs> but uh, I do want to talk briefly about, because I know this is a reason why a lot of people come out to the stream today, um, any kind of advice you have specifically for people looking to break for partner. Uh, I know that you got partnered about four years ago now, um, but was there anything, you know, you mentioned that a, a, a Twitch staff person came into your stream. Um, is there anything you think that helped you to stand out maybe reason that that person came to your stream in the first place um anything that you found even just to grow your stream that's been really helpful recently um a schedule helps a lot uh helps a lot when in regards to viewers uh in my opinion in that uh viewers know when to to come back to your stream Mm -hmm. and when you're on um 
partnership, I, I, I want to say I have advice for people, but at the same time, I, I don't think I do because it was such a long time ago. Mm. Um, I, wa I, I want to just put a point across clearly that you have to enjoy what you're doing and not be thinking that there's, uh, you know, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that you've got to, you've got to be really enjoying what you're doing. You've got to really be invested. You've got to put the time in the money in, the effort in and, once you get partnered, if you get partnered, that's just the start of the journey. There's, mm. there's so much more to it. Um, there's so much more that you have to do afterwards. There's constant upgrades that you need to make. There's, there's constant community changes. There's, there's engaging with your community. There's doing things off cast as well as on cast. There's, uh, you know, it's, it's, if, if you go in for partnership, you really need to love it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, partnership isn't really, nothing changes that much when you get partnered. Uh, now, especially that the affiliate is a thing now, you know, you still can get subscribers, yes. you still can get bits. So partnership is less different than it used to be. Um, yeah, it's not being able to be affiliate. I mean, there's there's affiliates out there with more subscribers than me. There's, <laughs> there's affiliates out there with more viewers than me that still haven't been partnered. There's, you know, it's it's... It's a lot easier now, but at the same time, like I said before, the case-to-case -case scenario I think was a better system because uh, because people can connect with you and and see what you have to offer rather than just oh you hit X amount of viewers. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, one thing I think that probably does help you stream out a lot is the way that you uh, make subs feel really special to your channel because you talked briefly about what you do, but do you want to? again kind of explain how you just offer some cool things to subscribers on your channel uh well i i will i will go into that but at the same time i like to make everybody feel welcome and feel right. uh appreciated there's there's no you've got to subscribe to be in my discord no everybody's <laughs> open to be in my discord i'm always available to be messaged i'm i'm very reachable at all times um i i like i like to make everybody that comes into my channel feel appreciated for taking the time out of their day to spend a little bit of time with me. The the sub bonuses that I have um, in regards to the WWE wrestling streams that I, I already talked about and uh, each sub getting a wrestler, um, like that's that's a weekly show that I put on that's kind of an interactive experience for people, um, for, for subscribers. And it's not like uh if if you're not subscribing anymore because you know subscriptions only last 30 days or whatever <laughs> um i don't i don't just get rid of you in regards to the the wrestling thing if you if you if you've supported me in any way you're appreciated mm. and you know it's only if that because there's only so many slots on the wrestling show that i can put people <laughs> on you know like, yeah that i think um, is one of the reasons why it's so great is because you know you have a real reason why this has to be limited to subscribers is you just don't have the time to make every single viewer in the stream a yeah, wrestler. Yeah. So that's a really good reason to uh, kind of get it with subs. And it's also just a really very unique idea. I've never seen anything like that on any other stream. So, I wouldn't say I'm the first. Really? Um, not, not that I know of anybody that was doing it before, but I wouldn't say I'm the first to have done that. I don't think <laughs> it's um, the, the most unique idea ever. It's just, it's just fit. It's just, the stars aligned in, in regards to wrestling being my life uh wrestling games being fun and accessible on all platforms and uh viewers that connect with me uh wanting wanting to be a part of the fun mm. and and it, it all just kind of aligned and it, it just made sense that i would do that and and it's become like I, i've never had a weekly show before before the wrestling right so uh, you know, I, I've tried to make multiplayer Mondays a thing, but it didn't didn't hit off. You know, I've mm. tried Mario Kart on a set day, and as fun as it was, it I I couldn't I couldn't commit to it because mm. like the you know you need people to make it fun, and if people aren't there, you know I get a bit salty when it comes to Mario Kart. <laughs> but wrestling is something that I don't have to reply rely on other people being there for. But if people are there, then they can enjoy the fun. Hmm. like 10 times more because they can be involved in it and yeah it's that's like a, it's an interactive experience 
That's a great point. I didn't think that, about the fact that you can do it whether they're there or not, you know, <laughs> you yeah. don't have to rely on them being there. So that's pretty smart. Um, I just mentioned that because I know a lot of people are looking for ways to uh, make subs feel kind of special in their chats, um, maybe more unique ways. And, you know, you mentioned you probably aren't the first to do it, but I've never seen anyone else do something like that with their subs. So I just thought that was a really cool example to point okay, out. Thank you. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And clearly Twitch did too, if they had you doing that on the front page. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. cool. Well, we are kind of wrapping up the discussion here. Um, quickly. Our, yeah, I know it's, it's already been 40 minutes. It's Isn't that crazy? Back. Yeah, that's flying by. I told you, man. That's how it goes. Um, but we will get into viewer chat questions in just a couple minutes, guys. Uh, I have just like two more questions for you. Uh, quickly, yep. is there, we talked a little bit about this already, but are there any misconceptions people have about partnership? Uh, maybe even some misconceptions you had about partnership after you got partnered? Um, anything? Uh, I thought I thought that uh, the income would be a lot more. Hmm. Um, you know, like I said, when I started streaming, it was, oh, this is a way to make a bit of money while I'm on, I'm, you know, cropped, but, uh, <laughs> um, it, it, it isn't, like I said before, it's a battle every day. So you've got to battle for, for those subscribers. You gotta, you gotta entice people to come and support you. And, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's harder to make a living off of this than people think. Hmm yeah um you know to reference ninja again we can't all be ninja <laughs> yeah he is uh definitely a exceptional case he's a special one yeah he's a, he's a... <laughs> no yeah i think that's definitely true um even affiliates are kind of the same way i mean you get excited to get affiliate and then you realize you're making like two dollars maybe off yeah the, person, I mean, so. I, the fact that you have like again I, I don't know if i'm preaching confidentiality or anything but uh <laughs> you you have to earn at least a hundred dollars before you even get paid right and i i look at a lot of affiliates that get a couple of subs and you know will they ever hit that a hundred dollar threshold uh, you know i haven't that's just money <laughs> that's just money going straight to twitch yep you know it's so true. you know I, and that's not me ripping on twitch at all i love this platform I, i've been given so many great opportunities on this platform but you know i think that yeah. that may that may be something that should change Right. It's the hundred dollar payout, I think, at, at some point, because I just don't think that not every affiliate can can attain that. And when when people get excited about affiliate, only to be disheartened by that <laughs> that little information, again, it can it can lead to people quitting. Right. Or becoming less. I mean, less it just invested. kind of reinforces your point that people shouldn't really be doing this for the money, right? I mean, that is sort of a bonus that comes along, but yeah. you really have to be sustained by your passion for streaming and gaming and networking in general rather yeah. than the money. So networking is, is something like, I don't know if you was going to get to this, but I, I wanted to say it because I want to thank yeah, true sure. gaming for opening my eyes a little bit. And that, uh, for the past four years, since I got partnered, I was part of a team then, uh, and the team, I'm not going to name names, but the team wasn't a very nice team to be a part of. It was <laughs> a, Hey, if you subscribe to my channel, you can be a part of my team. Uh, but you don't need to subscribe because you're a special streamer. Uh, you're mm. you're popular, so you don't have to subscribe. You can be a part of the team. And so that to me put a sour taste in my mouth about teams mm. in that I, I didn't I didn't know what I was getting into. I've had people ask for me to create teams before and I I refuse because I I've only had that one experience of being part of a team that I didn't enjoy and I didn't mm. want people to think that I was gonna be that kind of person that ran a subscriber only team you know i i it, it put a sour taste in my mouth but then true gaming came along my fiance told me to go for it i was skeptical at first but since becoming part of the community and realizing that i can be part of another community while still running my own community has helped a lot networking is big in twitch and mm -hmm. it's something that i've kind of stayed away from i've shied away from and since being part of True Gaming, I've met other streamers. I've uh, experienced other situations from streamers, and it's helped a lot. So mm. I'm I'm very thankful for True Gaming. It's it's made me, uh, you know, I've I've joined another community since because oh, wow. because of uh, you know having a positive experience this time round. I think I was just nervous about ig ignoring my own community, but it isn't that at all. If you if you're right yeah if you're gonna network it, it you know you can still 
make your community the most important while still uh, joining others and being involved with others. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm super glad to hear you say that um, just about you've had a good experience. But also, uh, like you said, like our community is not meant to replace your streaming community. It's more of no. it's sort of like a supplement or just a coming together of multiple communities. Um, yeah. So and I, I, I was I was uh, as a Power Ranger fan, I was using the term making a Megazord out of my yeah. communities, <laughs> like combining the communities. And that's awesome. A that's yeah, we are the Megazord. So <laughs> that's so cool to hear. All right. Well, uh, we will get ready to jump into chat questions. Uh, last question I have for you. If you could give one piece of advice to a brand new Twitch streamer about anything, partnership or how to set up a green screen, whatever, what would you tell that person? Just love what you're doing. Keep yourself motivated because you love it, not because you think that there's something to get out of it. Hmm. Yeah, that's and and make community the most important part of your life. Well, not the most important part, but like, you know, <laughs> community is the most important part of streaming. I think. Yeah, absolutely is, and that's the foundation of growth. So, awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. Um, we're gonna jump into chat questions now, guys. So, if you have a question for sure. Nero TNC or myself, just do me a favor and tag at Greencourt in the chat so I can see your question. Uh, just to make sure, oh, I forgot to change this, darn it. Uh, basically, yeah, if you have any question, just tag me in the chat so I see it in bright red. Uh, I do I'm see one. Uh, Rambicos with True Gaming. Yeah, Rambicos did say, uh, you mentioned before that you saw streamer friends fall out of streaming when they started variety streaming. What got you through that period and what advice would you have for streamers in that situation? Interesting. Uh, what got, got me through that period was that I, I didn't have much else going on. Um, it was it was either sit and game in front of people and and have the companionship or sit at home wallowing in my own self p you know <laughs> uh, i was uh i was in a it was part of a dark time for me and you know streaming got me through it and and so like regardless of what i was streaming uh there was at least one or two viewers that stuck around from the minecraft days and and they were companionship enough to keep me plowing through to the other side and for for streamers in that situation, again, it it just comes down to if you love it, you you will you will find that motivation in yourself to keep going. Absolutely, that's such great advice, Rambicos. Thank you for the question, man. Uh, X Gears has another question. He says, with the increasing amount of streaming and the traffic coming towards Twitch, do you feel the gap between affiliate and partner is too large, and do you believe affiliate is too easy to get? Interesting. Uh um affiliate may be too easy to get i've got no like problem with the affiliate system and and stuff but you know i've i've had friends stream for seven days out of you know a month and they become affiliate and they're officially making money on twitch and like it's it's a little bit of resentment because it took me a year and i got pushed away when i was at 400 viewers at a time and you know it's a little bit of resentment in me but i, I don't hold any ill will towards anybody that decides to stream for seven days out of 30 and ends up getting affiliate i i each to their own live and let live is is kind of my lifestyle and and so that's 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 to them you know like is partnership hard to get it's not that hard to get now than it was back when i got partnered i got lucky and i will always say that i got lucky in that i had a a very nice staff member enjoy what i was doing and i'm glad that i got partnered when i did because i wouldn't be getting partnered now if if <laughs> if, 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 if it was the partnership system back then you know right i think some of the you know partnership is hard to get like you said but that's some of the fun of it too um, i think if it wasn't so hard to get everyone wouldn't want it so badly yeah if that makes yeah. sense so I, and and again it would be a lot of disheartening disheartment when you realize that, you know, just because you get partner doesn't mean the support's going to be there to keep you going and, right. and consistently keep you going uh, in regards to making money on Twitch. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for that question, X Gears. I see another one from Wild Dunyon. He says, would it be best to focus on one or two games instead of a genre? I found my niche, which is MMO, MMO RPGs, but I do love playing other games, but don't want to have to play them offline and lose my community from one night because it's not their game taste or what they want. Basically, 
Uh, would you recommend focusing on one or two games instead of a genre? I when I when I made the switch from Minecraft to uh, primarily the Binding of Isaac, I was playing a second game, uh, a variety of second games um, later on in the cast, and I think that got people used to me playing different games. Um, I would drop viewers, and uh, you will drop viewers if if you become known as an MMO guy and you switch to something completely different FPS or whatever, you will drop viewers, but it comes down to, uh, there will be people that will stick by you. There's the fact that you've got to love what you're doing anyway. So, you know, if you're going to do it, then why not stream it? If you've got the ability to do so and, and the goal of what you want your community to be. So if you want it to be just MMO based then yeah, maybe just stick to MMOs on stream. But if mm-hmm. you want a, community that's welcoming of everything then then go for everything awesome. the community will come if you if you if you you're good enough and right. if you, you know you know not if you're good enough but if you're <laughs> passionate <laughs> enough sticking if to you're what, passionate enough yeah that's that's the right word so yeah just sticking to what you want to do for sure uh dunyan hope that helps man <laughs> see a question from starfjord he says do you like parsnips uh, this is a stream meme about <laughs> taking the parsnip to the community center in Stardew Valley. Uh, the answer to that question is no, I do not. And uh, no, I have not uh, reminded myself to take a parsnip to the community center. <laughs> I'm glad you explained that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> another one from The Screaming Idiot. It's an awesome name. It says, how do you set up a schedule when you have a lot of things going on in your life that doesn't respect your stream and would interrupt a set schedule? This is a huge issue I've personally had. It just comes down to how do you prioritize the stream? Uh, I I have uh, three children. I have uh, two that are in school and I've got a six month old uh, baby. And it's hard to fit streaming around being a family man. Like again, I I don't have a job, I can't work. Um, This is my job. Um, So I have to treat it as a job and I have to prioritize it where i can and i fit it in the time that i have um you do not want to be losing sleep over you don't want to be choosing uh streaming over sleep or streaming over school or whatnot you you need to prioritize your life the right way and you know your time for streaming will come if you finish school or you know time off work setting up a schedule it, i i can't answer that everybody's different mm-hmm. i just managed to fit my schedule in where where and how i could and that was around school time and, right. and stuff like i still managed to put my kids to bed i still you know managed to do other stuff in the mornings awesome yeah one recommendation i've seen from a couple of our streamers if you have a if your schedule is hard to make consistent one thing you can do and some big streamers will do is just post like a weekly schedule like for that week if you can manage yeah, that, that on Twitter or even make it into a graphic um, just saying like hey this week here's when I'll be on and then like you said just making priorities like if something happens with your wife or your daughter then you might have to cancel stream that night but as long as the stream knows that you'll probably be okay. You can use social networks very powerfully. There's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Facebook. Um, there's the channel feeds on Twitch now. Mm-hmm. Um, Twitch is a social network, so you got to treat it as such. You got to network on there, like like you would elsewhere. Um, yeah, it's you. You can reach people many different ways. Discord as well. Discord is a huge thing. Discord's a huge component as to why my community is as strong as it is today. Mm. Um, I was I was adamant on keeping with Teamspeak when Discord came out because I don't like change, um, <laughs> but it's the best change I've made, and and Discord has made such a huge impacts on keeping my community as strong as it has been oh man for sure i mean we host team speak servers and we still use discord here so <laughs> it tells you how strong it is yeah um okay question from rob all games this is a pretty good one i think what are your thoughts on path to partner being in your stream title do you think it helps or hurts you i think it makes you look small time mm. if that makes sense i've always had the thought of that i have to treat this as a job and i have to respect it as a job and 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 such i have to make myself be as professional as as possible and and so uh path to partner while i don't think it's gonna hurt i just think it makes you look like you you 
you're not there yet. Mm. It kind of open puts eyes on you that you're not a partner rather than you're you're trying to be a partner. Yeah, I, I don't sense. know if that makes sense, but that that's how I see it. Right, it kind of uh, might delegitimize you a little bit in some people's eyes, maybe. Like, oh, this guy's not a partner yet. Maybe I shouldn't watch him. That kind of thing. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. It, it, you can put people off by your title, mm-hmm. just by your title. For sure. <laughs> title is one of the weirdest things. By your title as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the question, Rob. Hope that helped you. Uh, Silent Ghost 73 said, Do you see Mixer being a threat to the partnered streamers, as in pulling viewers away and possibly becoming more of a Mixer viewer over Twitch? Interesting. I've seen uh, I've seen Twitch streamers go over Twitch friends go over to Mixer and have more success over there. Um, I think it's a smaller pond, so you know you're going to look like a bigger fish in a smaller pond. Um, it's it's not a it just comes down to where you you think your community is. And as a as a Twitch streamer, I I wouldn't think twice about going elsewhere because my community is here. If you don't have a strong community on Twitch, or if you if you think that your community will follow you over to Mixer, then by all means, go where you think you're going to make the most out of your career choice as such. Um, I don't really see it being a threat to Twitch. Twitch is huge. Mm-hmm. Twitch is number one, and I think it will be number It's like It's like YouTube and Daily Motion. Yeah. I think it's... Um, I've talked a little about this before, but basically in the same way that you're not really... Like, yes, there's only so many viewers on Twitch, but you're not really going to be fighting for viewers that often on Twitch because there's just so many out there. I, I think people, different people will watch Mixer than those who watch Twitch for the most part. Yeah. There's maybe some overlap, yeah. but it's not usually the same audience. So. I, th- I think the best thing Mixer's got going for it is the Xbox integration. Right. So, so it's a lot of Xbox people you get an watching. Xbox viewer, and an Xbox viewer doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be a chatter. Right. And, and so, you know, are they going to be invested in your community? Like, there's lots of questions that can be asked about it. For sure. But basically, probably not going to be stealing viewers is sort no, of the answer no. to that. So, thank you for that question, Silent. Uh, Mr. Pure Instinct, always a mainstay. He says, how do you advertise your sub-incentives? Do you speak about them on stream, have them in your panels or chat? How should a newer streamer with few subs promote these things? I feel like I have... If I've ever talked about it, people leave the stream. Interesting. Um, I think it depends on what the incentives are. Uh, I have a panel that says, you know, uh, you get first priority to play with me on stream if I'm playing a multiplayer game. Um, it, it, it says that it supports me overall. I, I, I think you can you can detract people away if the first thing that you say to them is, oh, you should sub to the channel um, because you can get this and this and this. At the same time, I've been practically doing that when it comes to Saturday <laughs> afternoon wrestling because people will one of their first questions that they'll ask is, "Can I be a wrestler?" and and so you know it, it's 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 a, another hard question. Each each person's different, and it depends on what kind of uh, viewer that you want. If you have sub perks like my wrestling thing, you're either going to get a viewer that comes in and says, "Oh, I have to pay for a wrestler. That's rubbish," <laughs> and they'll leave. <laughs> want that person in your community anyway well like if yeah and it sounds like what you've done actually is you've made people ask about it rather than tell them about it so they see yeah, wrestlers yeah. on the stream and they're like hey how do i get to do that so maybe having something visible people can see and ask about getting rather than just telling them they're not asking for it but at the same time like i i don't i don't just make it so just subs can play with me in regards to if i'm doing a mario kart stream mm-hmm. like that that'll be open to everybody like the first priority is just there as a, hey, this is a bonus if you if you sub you get first priority, but that generally never really comes into it. Right. Cool, Pierre. Hopefully that helps you. Uh, see if you can find a way to sort of visualize your sub perks. I, I mean, <laughs> just to get back onto that, having a panel uh, that says about it, I don't think is very intrusive. Hmm. Um, if people are going to take the time to read your panels and read your about me or whatever, then I think they're going to be more invested in your stream anyway. Right. You don't usually get people that come in and straight away go to the about me section or whatever. Um, they're they're going to, if, if people are going to stick around, then they're probably already chose to do that if they're reading your panels. So yeah. I don't think it's a, a, a problem having it on a panel. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that sounds totally fine. Thank you for the question, Pierre. Gamer Dad NC says, 
Do you find it more difficult as a partner during a front page event to keep the toxic behavior down? Do you think you need to take a different approach with such a large viewership with new viewers to control the behavior? Um, I Luckily, I didn't have um, much toxicity. Mm-hmm. I had about three or four people that needed banning straight away. <laughs> and I, I had good mods that, that my mods are fantastic. I love my mods. Uh, every Every good stream needs to be supported by good mods, I think. Um, and so I'm very lucky that I have a good set of people that, you know, community members that become good friends. They, they look after my stream. I also, uh, integrated new commands that I made sure that was being posted, uh, uh, anytime anybody had a question so that I wasn't continually saying the same thing over and over <laughs> right. that, that can turn people away because they don't want to hear a rerun of what you're saying every five minutes, especially if it's a spiel about people sub into the channel so that they can get a wrestler <laughs> you know i i had that all set up um yeah luckily i didn't i didn't have to change too much apart from my chat was a bit more active <laughs> and uh i just had to keep up with that and that yeah. was that was fun for me that was exhilarating that was adrenaline for me you know <laughs> that, that was that was the best thing oh man you could see it on that stream too you were you were so energetic there it was really cool to oh watch. man i'm still <laughs> feeling the high from it seriously yeah I can imagine. Awesome. Uh, Gamer Dad, basically just make sure you have a good team of mods is what it sounds like. Um, moving on here, X Gears, another question. He says uh, to you, Nero, you have a regular Saturday afternoon wrestling and recently you've had a GameCube week. Have you considered anything along those lines recently? Uh, I love my GameCube week. I, I did a GameCube appreciation week and that was purely because I just wanted to sit and play GameCube games <laughs> um, and it turned into a week and a half of it. And uh, I ended up like trying to complete one of the games. I failed, but I, I tried to complete one of the games as well when uh, I didn't have anything else on. Uh, I, I would like to do a Game Boy Advance week, mm. but I, uh, I'd have to emulate. Um, <laughs> dirty know, word. For most of them. Yeah, dirty word. Um, but I, I would like to do like appreciation weeks again. Uh, but whether whether it comes because there's a lot of games coming out this year there's yeah. so many good games coming out it's it's hard to find the time when when i i stream five hours a day t- like 12 to 5 p.m gmt or bsd as it is during the summer and uh i stream monday to thursday and then saturday is scheduled for wrestling so i've only got four days at five hours a day it's hard to get through some of these games i'm currently playing far cry 5 uh, with a friend as well and it's hard to get through these games uh, in that time Right. So God of War's coming out in a few days. I don't know if I'm going to get Far Cry done. You know, it's it's hard to fit these things in. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot coming out this year. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, cool. So we are at an hour now, um, which is usually how we how long we kind of schedule for the show. If you have a little more time, we can answer maybe like three more chat questions because this yeah, is. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Okay, awesome. There's just so many today, and they're all really good. Uh, CM Chris Twenty XX. He says. Has Nero got an idea for his next emote at all? If so, what would it be? Have you thought about that? Uh, <laughs> I haven't. I, I never thought we'd get to the point where we did when it comes to emotes. Uh, we're we're a long way off of getting a new emote, so <laughs> I think I'd, I'd 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 think about it when we get closer to it. Uh, awesome. I, I'd like to like to have something based around my family. I think because I've got a Nero baby emote that's referencing my 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 child. I've got a Nero waifu emote, which references my fiance. Uh, I have nothing for my other two kids, so I should really, uh, really think about including them so that they don't get uh, jealous. That's funny. Um, cool. Maybe look for those coming soon, guys. If you support Nero, of course. Uh, I'm gonna try and jump around to some people that haven't gotten their questions answered yet, because I see yep. some from you know Pure and Gamer Dad. You guys already asked one, so I'm gonna jump through a little bit here. Simply Average Bro, he says. I've heard of people covering the viewing number on their dashboard and acting as if they have a hundred viewers all the time. Do you find that to be a good practice or do you think it would be a better, be better to see that number and use that as motivation? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think you can get demotivated when you see the number and see it dwindling or something. Uh, and that can put a hamper on you. I, I personally do see my view account when I stream and I, I have been known to get a little salty or get a little disheartened when my <laughs> view account drops. I'm open to say that. Uh, I I try and stream as if I'm streaming to a million people uh, because, you know, energy is infectious. Yeah. And if if you've got the energy and the enigmatic personality, I think you can draw people in. Uh, 
I, I, I don't know if it if it helps if I cover up the view account or not because I've not done it. <laughs> um, and again, each to their own. Um, my advice though is to to try and be as energetic and as uh, as as open with your personality as possible. Yeah, I think it's definitely one of those things that you have to try and see what works for you because so right now I'm actually doing that. I basically have a small window that I'm sliding back and forth and looking at viewers, looking at chat. So right now I can't see the viewer number, but um, we have some streamers who swear like, I will never look at the viewer account all stream. I just don't want to see it. It affects me too much. And then other streamers who are like, I have to see it at all times because it'll motivate me if I see a lot of people in the stream. So it sort of depends on what works for you. I don't think there's a blanket answer to that question yeah so. can, I, can i just go back to the emote thing yeah uh, I, I was talking i was talking about having an emote for my, my child and and my wife i've also got an emote for my dog but not my other two children so. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh you better get on that <laughs> soon yeah <laughs> all right uh how the squid has a question he says for you or nero how have you used social media platforms to grow i'm struggling in reaching out on twitter to market myself any suggestions I'll let you answer that first. Uh, I feel like my growth on Twitter was due to Minecraft kids. Mm. I, I don't think I have a very good uh, reach when it comes to Twitter. I've got over a thousand followers um, and I'm very prudish when it comes to uh, who I follow. So I don't get many of those follow backs that you, you <laughs> see people doing so often. Um, I like to keep my follow account down so that I can keep up with the timeline. Mm. Um, but I, I think, you know, if you do follow people, a lot of people and you get those follows back um that can help but yeah. it, it depends on how engaged the community is going to be uh to to help i use a lot of hashtags as well i i think hashtags help i get a lot of bots like retweeting me when i hashtag twitch or hashtag live mm. in it but you know if if at least one person t searches tw twitch and they come across my um tweet or my tweet that's been retweeted um, then that's one extra person that has eyes on me. It's true. And and so you've you've just got to use it to the best of your ability. Same with Instagram, which I'm not very good at using, <laughs> I'll be admitted. And Facebook, I've only just opened a Facebook. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I've i not been the best with social media. I'm going to do my be best to, to get better at that. Um, but Discord Discord is, is huge for me. Yeah. Discord is, is just a center of my community. Absolutely. Discord's so key. Um, quickly, I would answer this question. Basically, how Squid, I wrote an entire blog article on Twitter uh, as a Twitch streamer, so I will drop that in the chat right now. Um, that's just a faster way to answer that question, so go check that out right. when you have a chance. Um, that should help you out. Um, quickly browsing through here, if I can find another question, maybe. There's a lot of just chatting. Um, give me a second here. Okay, let's go back up to Gamer Dad. I think we can do like one or two more guys and then we'll kind of wrap it up. So Gamer Dad said, do you find it more difficult as a partner during a front page event? Oh wait, did we look at this one already? I think we did look at this one. Yeah, we did that one. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, it's this one. Yeah, okay, so uh, Pure Instinct was talking about Discord. So we were just talking about that. This is a good question. How do you get folks to join your Discord? I really like the idea of my Twitch community being just that, a community where people interact together, and I feel like my Discord is growing even slower than my stream, which is already slow. I mean, uh, it depends. Like, you've got to make... I, I personally, like I said with Twitter, I don't like being in a lot of Discords <laughs> as well because I don't like my phone going off every five minutes unless it's something I desperately want to see. Um <laughs> So you've got to make it a, a nice place for, for people to be so that they don't join and then decide that they want to leave five minutes later. Um, so you've got to not, in my opinion, you've got to not overuse the everyone or here command. Um, I think you should leave that for when you're streaming or for important announcements, really. Um, not for, hey, does anyone want to play Fortnite with me? You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've been guilty of doing it though, so I won't, <laughs> I won't, I won't say I'm perfect. Um, I, I promote my Discord a lot. I have a, um, I have images that pop up on my screen, just like the true logo and and like my humble partner logo and my Discord logo um, that show that there is a Discord. There's a command for it in my chat. Um, most of my mods or my community as a whole will be very welcoming of new people joining the stream and will say, hey, 
if you want to continue chatting with us after the stream, we've got Discord, mm. and and we keep it as active as we possibly can. Um, I, I will, I'll be the first to say that I'd love my Discord to be even more active than it is. I'd love it to have more like people involved members um, than I have, but at the same time, I like that it's manageable and yeah. it's it's copable. I can read everything, you know. That's ours is far beyond that point right now. So yeah, I, it's, I do struggle. I do struggle. There's there's a lot of uh, again like I there's a lot of categories in in the true gaming oh, Discord God. that I I would never click on. Yep. So I I like to keep my categories as 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 small as possible so that people don't feel overwhelmed by <laughs> the amount of stuff that there is to be involved in. You know. Yeah, I I think I lean on that side too. If you have the choice to start a server, try to keep it simple. Um, I think ours has gotten crazy, but people still love it, so we just keep yeah, it that yeah. way. <laughs> I mean, that, like, like I said before, my word isn't gospel. You know, like people yeah. people enjoy different things. If you like, if you like a busy Discord, if you like a a a, a slow Discord, then you know each to their own. Awesome. Hopefully that helped you out, uh, Pure. So last simple question I see is from Halaford, Helaford, H L A Ford, H L A Ford. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Uh, it says Nero. Besides your front page time, what's your most memorable streaming experience? Which was the very first question I think we asked. It was the first time I met you, <laughs> HLA. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we we already answered that at the top of the uh, podcast, so you'll have to download the podcast when hey. it comes out on uh, Tuesday on now. Tuesday, Tuesday. Yes. You'll have to download that and listen to it when it comes out. So, uh, awesome. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Well, thank you guys all for coming out to the show. That is Stream Key. Uh, again, our weekly show here at True Gaming, where we talk to Twitch streamers about ways to improve as a streamer, grow on the platform, become a cooler person in all areas. So thanks for coming out. Nero, thank you so much for coming out to the show and being the guest oh, of honor. Uh, where can people find you, my man? Uh, Twitch.tv slash NeroTNC or NeroTNC.tv. Uh, Twitter.com slash Nero1000. YouTube.com slash NeroTNC. Um, you can go in my chat and there's commands everywhere. Um, there's links everywhere. You can you can do all the things. All, all the, the things. things. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, um, definitely go check him out, guys. I think you're streaming tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah. Tomorrow okay. at 12 p.m. BST, which is 7 a.m. Eastern and 4 a.m. Pacific. Um, I will be streaming my wrestling show, which is a very interactive cast. It's it's probably my most popular cast at the minute, so you definitely don't want to miss out. It's really cool, guys. Make sure you go watch that and sub to him if you want to be a wrestler on there. That's really cool. And unlock more emotes and stuff for him. So There you go. Lots of great stuff. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the show, please go check it out. I'm going to link the iTunes version today. Uh, we have 23 other episodes with other sponsored streamers about ways to grow as a streamer. So... If you have questions about Discord, Twitter, whatever, we've answered a lot of those in other episodes, so go check those out. Uh, we will be back here next week. will be a very special episode. It'll be on, uh, I think it's on Wednesday of next week, which is the 18th, which if you've been following True Gaming, is sort of a big deal, and we're going to have some stuff to talk about that week. I, I want to be in on this. <laughs> oh, you will be. You will be soon. <laughs> we're keeping it very under wraps, but um, right. definitely tune in because that's going to be a panel discussion with I think three of our sponsored streamers, three or four. So that'd be really cool, almost like a debate session. Um, live from the show floor, you can still ask questions, still get those answered, and you can get people to debate them. So if you wanna see Veloc and Dan argue about how to set up an overlay on OBS, then feel free to do that. But uh, that is our show, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next week. Adios. See you later.